the LA County Health Department looks for answers to why Porter Ranch residents are still getting sick following the recent gas leak. Attendees pour into the North Hollywood streets for the vegan street fair and take back the night empower sexual assault victims with activities and powerful speeches. This is Valley View News. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Jarvis Heron. And I'm Jamie Perez. An independent fact finder committee has determined that the 23 CSU campuses should give their professors a 5% wage increase. The committee was comprised of one member from the CSU, one from the faculty, and one independent member. Their finding paves the way for a potential faculty strike. Faculty members of all CSU campuses are threatening a strike in mid-April. Reporter Javier Cabrera sat down with CSUN faculty union president Nate Thomas. Professor Thomas, where does the possibility of a strike stand? Uh, where it stands is that we are legally able to strike now. We had already uh, specified the dates of the strike, uh, which are April 13th, 14th, 15th, and 18th, and 19th. The fact finder is an independent panel, an independent, a neutral party that will, that, well, this is the last part of the statutory process, the very last part. We, we've, we've, we were at an impasse, and the talks broke down. And this part of the process is very important. And what it has said is that pretty much, overwhelmingly, it has supported the uh, position of the faculty. It states that we should get a 5% raise. It states that 43% of our faculty should be eligible for a service salary increase. That's another 2.65%. This is what we were asking for. The report also states that our salaries have been stagnant, that we took a hit in 2008 with the furloughs and that our faculty are suffering. Um, and the fact a finder also suggested some other things that we look at in the future as we continue to fix the salary problem. This is not a one-time fix-all. This is a systemic problem with the salaries. And it is also suggesting that we work with the American Association of University Professors in looking at comparable university uh, systems like ours that, that grant bachelor's and master's degrees and, and, and kind of compare what their salaries are. Uh, some of this has been compared before with the, uh, with the organizations like the Chronicle of Higher Education. And their research shows that we're some of the lowest paid faculty in the country. The CSU faculty are lower paid than the junior college system. Some of our faculty are lower paid than K through 12 teachers. So again, uh, where it stands is that we are striking on April 13th. If we don't get the 5%, everybody has said that we deserve this. And what the fact finders report did not say is that they don't have the money. The CSU is saying that they only have $33 million specified for a 2% raise, and it would cost about $102 million to give us our raises. But the fact finder, uh, the report uh, doesn't say that they don't have the money. It's about priorities. It's about what they want to do with that money. A statement by the CSU Public Affairs Office says the CSU does not have the funds available for a 5% faculty raise. Instead, they have offered the faculty a 2% raise. It says the CSU would have to defund other programs in order to meet the 5% demand. If the faculty does strike, the CSU says classes will be open as usual. They also say the strike will not affect graduation. Valley View News reporters went out to get student reactions to the potential CSU faculty member strike. I definitely support the faculty strike and the pay raise. They don't get paid enough. I mean, you got professors here who are teaching here and like five other colleges. So why drive around to so many different places? You know why? It's because they don't make enough money. I think that they should get the 5% increase because they go to one of the most expensive schools. Most of them go to like Ivy League schools and um, they often have to keep getting their credentials because um, the educational system keeps improving. So um, I believe the professors need to need that monetary increase because um, without it, like they'd have to go part time job, do part time jobs at different universities, which means less focus on us as students. And uh, I think we really need that. I do support the faculty members because I do believe they deserve a higher increase of pay just because they did work hard and study hard themselves as students when they were students in college and university. I think the strike is a bad idea. You know, a lot of students are gonna get a week, another week off. We just came back from spring break, but another week off is kind of bad because we're coming up into finals. Most of the students support the faculty wage demands. However, some are hopeful that a strike can be averted. 
The California state legislature and labor have reached a tentative agreement to raise the state's minimum wage to $15 an hour. This agreement would mean California would have the largest statewide minimum wage in the nation. The agreement still has to be finalized by both parties. The deal would increase the minimum wage gradually over the next six years until it reaches $15 in 2022. If the state legislature approves the deal, it would avoid taking the issue to the state ballot. Valley View News reporters went out on campus and asked students about their thoughts on the minimum wage increase. I don't support it because, mainly because if you think about it, they're going to raise taxes. So it's going to be like kind of the same thing. So I don't fully support that. I think it's an excellent idea. Uh, I think people now working, uh, making, what, 11, 50, 10 minimum wage, whatever they're making, it's not enough. It's not livable. No, I don't. Because, because it makes it easier for all the other people, like the other people that did not go further past college, like for us. That's like our job right there. Um, kind of on the fence with it both ways. Uh, I mean, it's nice, you know, being, you know, minimum wage going up to $15 is nice for anybody who's working in a restaurant or retail, you know, just so you don't have to worry about you know, missing anything as far as uh, paying bills. It's just easier. But at the same time, you know, women wage going up, everything else goes up as well. So it doesn't make a huge difference in anyone's lives as far as, you know, everything else gets more expensive. If you have to really, you know, put in some extra money that'll help keep everything afloat at home or just a roof over your head in general, I feel like it'll benefit more people than not. Los Angeles County continues to wrestle how to best handle a growing homeless population. There are plans for legislation and a multi-point program for helping residents without homes. Valley Views reporter Haley Kramer has more on the story. Los Angeles, tourism, glamour, and severe poverty. Angeline Swan has been living on the streets of Van Nuys for more than two years. She once found a job on Craigslist, but it ended up being a fake. She also rented a room having no idea that she and the other tenants were about to be evicted. I moved in on January 1st and the police moved me out on January 6th. Swan is just one of more than 44,000 homeless LA County residents. That number may have grown. The census from this year's homeless count has yet to be released. It's just like I'm stuck, like I'm supposed to go to work today. Um, however, the police were here early this morning and we have to move. Last year, the LA County Board of Supervisors came up with a 47 point plan to stop homelessness and includes a more narrow focus on mental health, housing and jobs. It's supposed to end the prison to street cycle. My criminal background prevents me from having an opportunity to, to rent a place. Karen Ugarte is a case manager for Rapid Rehousing in Glendale. She explains that the stigma attached to the homeless community makes finding work and lodging difficult. Honestly, finding the housing is the hardest part. A lot of landlords um, and owners don't want to work with um, this population. New problems have come to light since the initiative was approved in February. Mayor Eric Garcetti says the $100 million budget for the 47-point program won't be enough. CSUN political science professor Tom Hoganesh says attention to homelessness comes in waves. The real estate market and the economy are up. There's more money floating around for these kinds of services. But when the economy tanks, it's the first thing to get cut. The county plans to create a homeless tax in order to bring in consistent revenue. Meanwhile, Swan says not everyone living on the street chooses to be there. In spite of a rough road, she has created a cleaning service and works every day. I've been raped, robbed, beaten, battered, and bruised. Not broken, though. LA County supervisors are handing this spending decision over to voters. The new homeless tax will be on the November ballot. I'm Haley Kramer, reporting from Van Nuys. The Los Angeles County Health Department has started testing inside 100 homes in the Porter Ranch area. Inspectors are trying to determine why people are still getting sick following the seal of the Aliso Canyon oil field gas leak. Here's Valley View News reporter Javier Cabrera with more. The Los Angeles County Health Department has started its 10-day testing for 200 chemicals inside 100 homes around Porter Ranch. County health inspectors started the first part of testing by wiping surfaces inside the homes to collect samples. Health inspectors also began testing air samples inside homes over a 24-hour period. Angelo Bellomo is the deputy director for the LA County Health Department. We'll send all of these samples to the laboratory and we'll get laboratory analyses that we'll have on the order of 200 
different chemicals. So this is a very broad range of chemicals in multiple physical states, not only the gases and vapors that have been looked at previously, but also particulate matter. The department says it will test 10 homes that weren't contaminated by the gas leak and compare the contaminated levels with the 100 homes affected by the leak. We have a map that shows what is the target area that we were targeting. And we specifically did not want to do random testing throughout the entire area. We wanted to go to an area that was more likely to have contamination than others. Balomo says the situation is a concern from a public health standpoint because of the high number of health symptoms reported weeks after the leak was sealed. And as a result, uh, we have to collect more data so that we can really shed some light on what could be going here. We, it indicates to me we do not have the full picture yet as to what's causing this. And this is a very dynamic and unprecedented situation that we're trying to evaluate. The county health department plans to have results of its testing by late April or early May. In Porter Ranch, Javier Cabrera, Valley View News. Construction documents show new changes to the California bullet train could cost up to more than 30 percent above original estimates. The contractor team sent a log that includes more than 300 changes. More than 200 of those changes don't have cost estimates attached to them. State officials say the documents are not official demands and should not be considered final. Bernie Sanders defeated Hillary Clinton in three states over the weekend. Sanders' wins in Washington, Hawaii and Alaska were all by at least 40 percentage points. Sanders says every vote is critical. We are now winning in state after state the Latino vote. We're doing better now that we're out of the South with the African American vote. We're doing extraordinarily well with young people. Uh, and we are, we think we do have a path toward victory. Sanders currently has 975 delegates while Clinton has about 1,200. But Clinton has about 500 superdelegates who aren't bound to either candidate but are currently leaning toward Clinton. Sanders says his campaign plans to push superdelegates to back off their endorsements of Clinton. The FBI is setting up an interview process for some of Hillary Clinton's aides when she was Secretary of State. The interviews will help the FBI understand if Clinton or her aides knowingly or neglectfully discussed classified government secrets in her private emails. The use of a private email system was not banned at the time Clinton used it. Most legal experts believe there is little risk of Clinton being prosecuted for using her private email when she was Secretary of State. The State Department has released all 3,871 pages of Clinton's emails. 22 of those those emails have been determined to contain top secret information. Southgate police are looking for a hit and run driver who killed two people last weekend. Police identified the suspect as Brian Rojas. They say he crashed his Mercedes into a car carrying seven passengers. The five survivors are all in critical condition. Friends of the Southgate teens have made a GoFundMe page to pay for funeral and hospital costs. Two teenage girls fighting over a boy in Georgia ended in a violent brawl and one death. As many as 50 people participated in the fight that allegedly began over Facebook posts. A two-minute cell phone video captured the chaos as people joined the violence, some wielding pipes, bats, and using fists. You have a parent driving a child to any location for the purposes of fighting. Uh, there's something wrong. At the end, nine people, including six high school students, were charged with murder. A 13-year-old advocate against violence remains in critical condition after being shot in Chicago. Zeriel Trotter was shot in his lower back several blocks from his home. Police say two groups got into an argument and shots were fired, one hitting Trotter. Trotter was recently featured in a public service anti-violence campaign. I got to keep on hearing and hearing. People keep on getting shot. People keep on getting killed. Trotter is not able to speak yet and is sedated. LGBT rights groups filed a federal lawsuit over a North Carolina anti-discrimination law. The new law requires transgender students to use bathrooms assigned to their biological sex. It also provides cities and counties from extending protections covering sexual orientation and gender identity at restaurants, hotels, and stores. North Carolina is the first state to require public school and university students to use only the bathrooms that match their birth certificates. Advocates for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender rights say state legislators demonize them with false claims about bathroom risks. A rally against sexual assault and violence was held at CSUN last month. Valley View News reporter Alexis Liggins has more. More than 100 students took part in the Take Back the Night event at CSUN, while similar rallies were held throughout the world on college campuses. 
Statistics say that in the United States, one out of four women report being sexually abused on campuses. Supporters decorated shirts and signs, which were then hung in the student union. One message read, you cannot control me, as another read, it's not my fault. A number of women from the community and the college spoke about their personal experiences, but we were not permitted to record their testimonials. Later, poet King Wagner said it's important for non-victims like herself to get involved in this cause. I am like skinned and I certainly do not know my place since I never want to be confined to just one. There is importance in community and that's where change starts and so when you show support even if you're not if not like actively affected by what's happening then you're showing solidarity and like that's how we're able to change a society and it starts on something small like a college campus. After the speeches participants lit candles and carried signs as they walked and chanted across campus. We are women, we are strong. One of them was Dominique Osborne, co-director of this event. One of the biggest issues with sexual assault is people staying quiet, so the whole point is to make noise. It's kind of like a very literal response to how silent this issue is. So we literally make noise across the campus, around as many people as possible, so that they hear this is still an issue, this is still something we need to talk about. Every 107 seconds, another person in America is sexually assaulted, with only 32% of those cases actually going to the police. The fact of the matter is it's extremely hard to prosecute sexual assault for a number of reasons, both because our society doesn't really take sexual assault seriously and also just because as far as the judicial process is concerned, it's just a difficult thing to handle. Reporting for Valley View News, I'm Alexis Liggins. Coming up, a bomb in Palestine injures more than 300 people. And over a million Verizon customers get hacked. Oh look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Wildlife officials in Wyoming say a pack of wolves last weekend slaughtered 19 elk. Most of those killed were calves. Wildlife officials are concerned because wolves usually come back to eat their prey. Wildlife officials say they are permitted to kill wolves if the wolves are killing livestock. A bomb exploded in the Pakistani city of Lahore last Sunday and killed at least 70 people. Officials say more than 300 people were injured, mostly women and children. The bomb went off in a public park where families were celebrating Easter. Officials say the attack was aimed at Christians celebrating the holiday. This attack was the deadliest in Pakistan since December 2014 when 143 people were killed in a terrorist attack at an army-run school. Belgian authorities announced last Monday that the number of victims from the airport and subway suicide bombings rose to 35. Belgian federal police also released a 32-second video of the mysterious man in the hat seen at the airport shortly before the attack. Authorities have identified the man as Fekal Shafo. He's in custody and has been charged with terror offenses. Officials are leasing new check-in techniques for passengers to try to avoid future terrorist attacks at airports. Let's go to Stephen Fassel now for the latest in entertainment. Mariah Carey has canceled dates of her Sweet Sweet Fantasy Tour in Brussels because of the recent terrorist attacks there. The singer took to Twitter saying, I love my fans in Brussels, and at this time, I am being advised to cancel my show for the safety of my fans, my band, and everyone involved with the tour. Carey has not announced plans to reschedule the shows, although fans are saying, don't forget about us. Miss Carey has dates planned in Denmark and Oslo, Norway. Cubans got their satisfaction from the Rolling Stones earlier this week. For the first time, Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, Ronnie Wood, and Charlie Watts said hello to Cuba. The band played 18 songs in two hours. The concert was free. It's the first time the Rolling Stones have played on the island. The show capped off a landmark week for Cuba that began with President Obama's visit. Cubans from all over the island and even foreigners traveled to the historic concert. The Rolling Stones is the first major international rock band to play a concert since Fidel Castro banned rock music in the early 1960s. Promoters say fans started arriving a full 18 hours before the band took the stage. Donald Trump is a grandfather, again. His daughter Ivanka Trump has given birth to a baby boy. Ivanka and her husband, Jared Kushner, welcomed their third child, Theodore James, earlier this week. 
Donald Trump has made frequent references to his coming grandson while his daughter has been a staple at his side on his campaign trail. Ivanka is the eldest of Trump's five kids. Former America's Next Top Judge model Janice Dickinson has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Doctors identified the potentially cancerous mass during a routine medical examination. Dickinson's mother died from cancer, but doctors said the former model's diagnosis is common and highly treatable. Dickinson will have to undergo chemotherapy treatments unless the cancer spreads to other parts of the body. Nickelodeon's hit show All That will be back this April for a reunion show. All That was on the air for 11 seasons from 1994 to 2005. Some of the original cast members who will be back are Danny Tamborelli, Kel Mitchell, Josh Server, and Kenan Thompson. As technology continues to develop, the land of make-believe is getting closer to becoming an everyday reality. The LA Times says the launch of virtual reality headsets will be more important than the release of the iPhone. Virtual reality headsets will be used in gaming consoles such as the PlayStation 4 to create an alternative universe that's as easy to wear as a pair of glasses. The headsets are scheduled to be released by media giants HTC, Sony, and Samsung, whose advertising has been led by rapper Lil Wayne. Supporters of new technology says it will redefine mass media. Critics says the headsets will be expensive and disconnects viewers completely from the real world. Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice took in more than $170 million this past weekend. The movie had the best March launch ever and its sixth biggest domestic opening weekend of all time. Director Zack Snyder's movie has been panned despite its success. Batman's Ben Affleck and Superman star Henry Cavill attracted male fans and younger crowds. Warner Brothers has also announced release dates for the sequels for the next five years. That's all for entertainment. Now back to Jamie for more news. Thank you, Stephen. Japanese-based NTT Data is buying Dell's technology services businesses for more than $3 billion. NTT Data says the purchase will enhance its cloud and business process, outsourcing BPO services. Officials say the Japanese company has been looking for new sources of revenues outside of Japan. Still ahead, we have an update on CSUN's baseball team. And residents gather in North Hollywood for the Veen Street Fair. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure is too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just please don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Welcome back. A fire broke out last week at a vacant church building in the Vermont Knowles neighborhood of South L.A. The fire was reported in the 8300 block of South Hoover Street at 5 o'clock early morning. Flames burned through the roof, causing it to collapse. About 125 firefighters knocked down the blaze. No injuries were reported. A pipe bomb exploded in an Anaheim alley on Sunday, causing minor damage to a wall. Police officials reported no injuries. The explosion occurred on North Anaheim Boulevard and West Wilhelmina Street just before 2 p.m. Residents in the area says it shocked their homes. Anaheim police and the Orange County Sheriff's Department are trying to determine who made it. An Indiana man has been charged with rape, murder, child molesting, kidnapping, strangulation, and aggravated battery in the death of a one-year-old baby girl. The 14-month-old infant died from asphyxiation and suffered from severe injuries all over her body. A private burial will be held for the baby. Now let's go to Nick Seaman with the latest on sports. Thank you, Jamie. The Cal State Northridge baseball team split its four-game series against the University of Portland Pilots last weekend. Northridge won the second and third games 2-1. to one. Infielder Yusuke Akatoshi had six hits in the series. CSUN's Brendan Barry hit 353 against Portland, finishing with three doubles and two RBIs. The Los Angeles Rams have begun cheerleader auditions. Preliminary auditions were held last weekend at the Galen Center on the USC campus. Final auditions will take place at the Forum on April 17th and will include an interview portion, swimsuit competition, and dance performance. Kansas City Chief Safety Hussein Abdullah announced he is retiring from the NFL because of numerous concussions. Abdullah played for seven seasons. He said his goals moving forward are to be of benefit to his family, community, and the world, and having a sound mind will be vital in accomplishing those goals. Prairie View A&M women's basketball coach Don Brown has been fired after suspending two players for dating. 
The players filed a complaint saying their suspension was discrimination against their sexual orientation. The university said Brown violated Title IX by discriminating against the players. Brown says the school's own Title IX administrator approved the suspension. The team rules state that the players may not have any non-professional relationships with other players, coaches, and other people affiliated with the team. Brown is planning to appeal the decision. The Los Angeles Clippers have clinched a spot in the playoffs after beating the Denver Nuggets 105-90. The Clippers started with a 9-0 run in the first quarter. Center DeAndre Jordan had a great game with 6 blocks, 16 points, and 16 rebounds. Denver played without two of their best players, Kenneth Fareed and Danilo Gallinari. That's all for sports. Back to you. Thanks, Nick. A new study from the National University of Singapore says white bread is linked to obesity and diabetes. Food scientists have developed antioxidants to combat this problem. Their solution? Purple bread. They are adding a chemical with a natural pigment that occurs in fruits and vegetables such as grapes, blueberries, and sweet potatoes. Finding healthy options for food can be difficult in today's world. Most people find that healthier food is more expensive because it is not in high demand. But the Vegan Street Fair comes to Los Angeles every year to offer patrons a cheap and healthy outlet for food and product consumption. Reporter Jamie Perez has more on the story. Every year, some of the best vegan eateries and vendors come together at the Vegan Street Fair. This year, the event was three times larger than previous years with around 100 vendors selling vegan food and clothes. Christopher Baez is the owner of Gorilla Warfare, one of the vendors selling custom-made t-shirts that promotes the vegan lifestyle. Basically, it was just uh, my passion for veganism, basically. I just, uh, I, I figured I, I didn't want to just keep it to myself. I wanted to try to help as much people as possible to spread the message. And, and then I figured, you know, how, how, how well, what, what other way that would be better as well than uh, fighting, fas fighting uh, ignorance with fashion, you know, basically. So I figured, you know, we, we, you can be a walking commercial. Aside from the vegan fashion apparel, most people come for the food that ranges from nut burgers, vegan pizza, and even vegan sushi. One vendor that caught a lot of attention was Sage Vegan Bistro, a plant-based bistro and beer garden. Nicole and Nathalie, who were working that food truck, said the most popular item on the menu is orange chicken. Well, it's not really made of chicken. It's actually made of... Cauliflower. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, cauliflower. dipped in tapara, and then we either put the orange flavor, the orange chicken flavor, or we put um, hot, um, hot sauce on it for the okay. buffalo wings. A lot of people have a misconception about vegans and that they can only eat fruits and vegetables, but really they can enjoy delicious treats as well, just like these vegan cookies. Although there were many vendors showing the sweet side of veganism, there were also plenty of entree-type selections as well. Two street fair attendees tried a vegan spring roll and chicken teriyaki from a vendor called Vegan World and said despite being meat eaters, they were content with the flavors. I mean, the spring rolls, I've had them before. They're really good. Uh, they didn't have no meat, so... Yeah, I mean, the meat... I haven't tried that one yet. It tastes, uh, it tastes different, but I guess it all depends where you get it from, if it's good or not. I've had some places where the meat doesn't taste the same and it's really bad, but this one's pretty good, yeah. Pretty yeah, good. it's really good. While many came for the food, others were there to simply be in the company of the vegan spirit. In North Hollywood, I'm Jamie Perez, Valley View News. Thank you for watching Valley View News. I'm Jarvis Heron. And I'm Jamie Perez. We'll see you next time.